So you're making your own game. Game development is kind of like a big triangle. You see, we've got art, design, and code, or mechanics. To make something good, you need all three of these. And maybe you get along just fine pulling from existing collections of props somebody already made, but to develop a game that's got art and soul, you'll need to eventually break away. We'll start in Blender where we'll be modeling a few example props, a variety of shapes. Then straight into Substance Painter where we'll go from high poly and bring it down low with a good old texture bake. The resulting prop is optimized for game performance and can be instanced millions of times. You can follow along with the props I make, or better yet, use something of your own design. Let's get started. Making your own game props from scratch involves modeling, texturing, and baking. It also involves a lot of decision making, which tools and techniques are best for the needs of a particular prop. Let's look at two different modeling approaches to start. The first is subdivision, or the subd workflow. Taking the subd approach means you need to keep three concepts in the back of your mind at all times. Bracing edges, quad topology, and edge flow. When we subdivide a surface, it's averaged out based on the distance from one edge to the next. When there's a great distance, we can get more of a rounded surface. We can brace one edge with surrounding edges to lessen that averaging distance. And the result is we have a tighter curve that retains more of the original form. This is that first concept of bracing edges. The second concept is quads. In sub D, we generally need quad topology. A triangle subdivided along a curved surface can create visual artifacts. As with most things in art, rules are meant to be broken, but I'm trying to help you understand how this works so you can be smart about the rules you choose to break. Quad topology around curves or deforming surfaces retains an artifact-free surface. It's why sub D or quad modeling is ideal for deforming objects. The third and final concept to keep in mind for sub D is something we call edge flow. One of the great benefits of sub D modeling is you can work on a relatively low complexity mesh and output something that's smoother and higher poly. To retain good flexibility with your low poly, you've really gotta keep edge flow in mind. So for example, if we need to add an edge loop that braces the mesh in a particular direction, I need to be mindful of my edge flow. When creating anything, my main priority is, will it work? And can I do this quickly? Sometimes the answer with sub D modeling is yes. So I choose sub D for the job. Other times though, a different approach is faster and works better. With that, let's look at our remaining modeling tools or methods. The next one encompasses sculpting and form forward modeling tools like plasticity. Plasticity is a CAD-based modeling program for artists. We model without concern for topology. It's similar with something like sculpting. Our main concern is the form of what we're creating. We shelf the question of topology to be sorted out later. If this is a non-deforming mesh, we can use simple automatic remesh tools or even simply decimate it. If it's a deforming object, then we can use the retopology tools to create clean topology on top of our existing mesh. My broad advice is this. If you use sub D, you will in the back of your mind always be thinking about those three points, bracing, quads, and edge flow. With some objects, I know I can juggle this burden and also create what I need to and to do it quickly. If those principles hinder your ability to create the shape you're going for, then you should try sculpting or plasticity, and as needed, pair it with something like retopology. It really depends on the specific mesh you're making for your prop, so I can't really give you one answer that just fits all scenarios, as much as I'd like to. Now you know the main modeling approaches, let's talk about high to low baking. Even in a world where we have nice options like Nanite and Unreal, as we texture, you should be familiar with what we call mesh maps. Mesh maps are the extremely fine details in something like a high poly prop, then baked down into maps that are applied to optimized low poly props. These run much faster in the engine and take up less space on disk. Whether sub D, sculpting, or other modeling methods were used, you'll want a high and low poly version of your prop. 
Getting the low poly comes down to two principles. One is localized complexity. So with sub D, for example, let's say you had extra edge loops to accommodate a smooth shape in your mesh or extra bracing in one area. Localize that complexity by cutting down and dissolving that extra geometry where it's not needed. And sculpting, that could mean adaptive decimation of the mesh so it's less dense in the areas of low frequency detail. For low poly, you might even remove some small details completely. The second principle is to dissolve anything that doesn't contribute to the object's silhouette. Simply put, if it's not holding up the silhouette, you don't need it in low poly, so dissolve it. Now, save your high and low poly mesh with underscore high and low, respectively. Make sure they're located in the same spot within your scene. Keep in mind, to get mesh maps, your low poly will need to be UV unwrapped. We can bake mesh maps in Marmoset or Substance. I'll show you the Substance approach here. First, open your low poly and come over here to bake mesh maps. Find your high poly and you can play with and adjust things like the cage distance. Generally speaking, go as small as you can before you start seeing red. Bake, check for artifacts. You can adjust settings and bake again as many times as needed. Under export, we can save the textures and choose mesh maps as the output. Back in Blender, we have these nice maps. Whether you're texturing all in substance and outputting final maps, or you use the baked mesh maps from substance and you texture in something like Blender, it's totally up to you. Personally, I prefer a node-based workflow, so I texture mostly in Blender, and I use my favorite procedural texturing tool, Fluent, to add things like normal level edge maps. If you texture in Blender, like me, I use the Simple Bake add-on and export my maps directly from here. I like texturing in and baking in Blender because I have more freedom to combine procedural and painted texture approaches. I can also optimize how many props are housed under a single set of maps. Ultimately, every prop I make gets some form of love in Unreal Engine as well. In this example, I baked a material ID map out of Blender, and I used that red channel to tell Unreal it can change the color of that area and the texture within each new instance. This gives a variety to my set dressing in Unreal, with every new prop having variation. I personally use a variety of tools together, each one bringing a bit of speed or functionality to the equation. The reality is your indie production workflow might look different than mine, and that's okay. It's something that's unique to how you prefer to work. Anybody out there giving an authoritative stance on what's right and what's wrong, in my experience, isn't necessarily sharing what's absolutely best for everyone, but they're defending the one way they do know how to work. And that's fair, especially if you're in a team environment where the pipeline demands the use of certain tools slotted into production in a specific order. But this is my approach. It's how I get the best results the fastest. And you can take from that what you find useful. So there's the theory. To put it into practice, check out some of my full prop creation trainings over on offworlddepot.com. Subscribing gives you access to all trainings and props for use on your own projects, as well as all of my textures. That includes commercial use. One price for everything is how I keep this channel going strong. So please consider subscribing. For the first 100 artists subbing from the link in this video, they'll get 20% off their subscription, so don't miss that chance. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in next week's video.